How would you like to have the plugin chains from some of the best mixing engineers in the business, such as CLA, Andrew Sheps, Jakir King, and many more right at your fingertips? Or not only that, how would you like to be able to combine the individual parameters of several different plugins and essentially create your own plugins right inside of your DAW? Well, make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video as I'll show you how to do both of these things and achieve all of this in just seconds right inside of your DAW. Hey, I'm Reagan Ram with OrpheusAudioAcademy.com, helping you make better music and grow a fan base online. So if you want to be able to essentially create your own plugins right inside of your DAW, you can use this awesome plugin here by Waves called Studio Rack. And so the way this works is you load up different plugins here. Now, since this is by Waves, um, it's designed to be used with all the Waves plugins. But even if you don't have any Waves plugins, you can still use this with third-party plugins so long as they are VST3. So if you have VST3 versions of third-party plugins installed on your computer, you can also use these inside of Studio Rack. By the way, if you want to try this out for yourself, I have a link to this in the description below, or just go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash studio rack. So anyway, you got your plugins loaded up in here, and then you can create these different macros based on different parameters on these plugins. So to keep this really simple for you, I created my own plugin here. I mean, you're not really creating your own plugin. You're creating really a plugin chain, but I feel like you're almost like creating your own plugin here. Um, so you can, to make this simple, I used all the one knob plugins here by Waves. Uh, these, these are really nice plugins. A lot of times I'll end up using several of them. And so this is nice because I can just put them all in one place here. And I can easily control, you know, with automation, these different macros here. So, for example, I've got driver here. And so this is synced to the driver here. But I could add other parameters to this. So I can right-click on this and learn. I can add other parameters from different plugins I have loaded in here. So you load in your plugins, and then you assign them to macros. Or you don't have to. You don't even have to use the macros. You can just have the plugins here, and you got this plugin chain saved that you can reload later. But I think the real power here is in being able to use these macros. Uh, and so I've got all these different plugins in here, and then I've got one place where I can control all of these. And so I'm having to have the screen filled with all these different plugins pulled up, and I just got one here. And so I've got this on these chords here. So if I like listen to this, we can play with these different knobs. using the filter automation there. You can add more reverb with wetter. Add some compression. So that's pretty cool, but that's just like one example there. Uh, another place where I use this was on my bass here. We'll listen to this without Studio Rack in and then with it in. And as you can see before and after, the biggest thing you hear is it sounds a lot louder when you have this in, but if you look at the meter over here, it's actually not increasing in volume. In fact, it's just becoming more consistent, which makes it sound louder. And that is because of some of the plugins we have loaded in here. So for example, uh, that would probably be the compressor here mainly. And so I've got the input and the output assigned to macros here. So you can see these in red. I've also got some saturation in here. So I've got the Beauty and the Beast controls set here to the macros along with the bass relief for like tightening up the low end if I want to. And so you can see as I move one of the macros, it moves the controls in the plugin. And then for, I have three different like EQ regions mapped in here too. So for bass, that's these really low frequencies down here. It's like sub bass really. And then I have buzz up here. So if I want to help the bass cut through the mix a little bit more, I can use that. And then I have growl here, which is kind of a little bit muddier. And I was, I was kind of cutting that here. So this is really cool. So I'll move, move these controls around a bit and see what this allows us to do.
So that sounds pretty good to me. A lot tighter, a lot fuller, and it really cuts through here. I'm gonna listen to it with the drums in. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And then you can obviously save this, so I could go to save as, and I could call this my base. And so there's so much you can do with this, right? There's so many more you can add. You can add plugins in sequence, like I've been doing here. You can do a multi-band split, which is really cool. Before I do, I just want you to know that I have a free mixing cheat sheet that you can grab in the description below. This walks you through a proven step-by-step -step mixing system so you can produce professional radio quality music from home each and every time, and it allows you to finish more mixes faster so you have more music to release. Again, that's in the description below, or you can go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash mixing checklist. I can put like different regions in here and put different plugins that only affect certain regions. So if maybe I only wanted to add saturation or something in this range, I can come in here, maybe just pull in one knob driver and just bump this up like that. You can hear it's adding a little extra energy just to that range. Shrink this range down, or we can make this range a little bigger to be like between 1,000 hertz and 4,000. And of course we could add this to a macro as well. So how much this one knob is increasing, we could add that to a macro if we wanted. So that's just really cool. So much power, so much flexibility. And it's why I say this is almost like creating your own plugin. On top of that, you can also have parallel splits. So this would be like where you want to add your wet effects so that they're not happening in sequence, but you can mix in different ingredients uh, as you want. So, you know, if you wanted to add in a delay here and you could add in a reverb here, and now you have different these different effects that you can now blend into the track as you as needed. Pretty cool, and this shows you there's so so much possibilities here inside of Studio Rack. It's a really awesome plugin, and it's definitely something that can make your life a whole lot easier while mixing. So I definitely recommend it. Again, check it out the link in the description below to get it, or go to OrpheusAudioAcademy.com/studiorack. So what if I told you that you could actually get the plugin chains from some of the best mixing engineers in the business, such as CLA. Andrew Sheps, Jakir King, and many more right inside of your DAW. Well, you can do that here with Studioverse inside of Studio Rack. You need, uh, I believe you need a Waves Creative Access membership to have access to this. It's pretty inexpensive. I know a lot of people complained when Waves released their like monthly plan, and I think rightfully so because they got rid of the ability for people to purchase plugins outright. Uh, but then they listened to the backlash, and so now you can you know, have one-off purchases of plugins and you have them for life. Um, but you can also sign up for their creative access plan. And I was already paying before this came out for the Waves update plan, which is $200 a year. So it's about the same, not the big of a difference. That's never dissuaded me from using Waves plugins. I think Waves plugins are the best in the industry. They're really awesome. And Studioverse is no exception. So once you have a Studioverse account and you've got Studio Rack, then you should have access to all the Waves plugins. Then what you can do is you click this little icon here and it pulls up Studioverse. And this gives you access to all kinds of plugin chains. And they're sorted by you know what plugins they're using. You can sort by settings here. So like how much CPU it's gonna take up, um, whether or not they're including third-party plugins. And there's also different tags here by instrument, genre, processor, and character. So if I wanted to search on like 80s, hey, I wanna do an 80s mix here. I don't know where to start. I can pull up 80s, look, 80s snare, 80s drum machine claps. And Tom Drum Booster. So these are all by Waves. Are there anybody like any producer? So the other thing is you can make your own plugin chains and save them to Studioverse so other people can use them. This makes it easy to share. I'm not seeing anything by other producers. Um, let's just go like vocals. So see, we're immediately getting some producers who, here. So Lou Diaz, Tizio, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, Preston Reed. Here's Chris Lord Algae. We got Andrew Sheps, Jeff Ellis, 
Jakir King, like I mentioned, and on and on. So many different producers in here, and you can get their exact plug-in chains. And so for the drums here, that's what I did here. I believe I used the new Disco by Yoad Nevo. You can see one of the cool things about this is just the educational value. You can like learn what are the pro producers putting on their different instruments? What chains are they using? And one thing I've noticed is a lot of them are using limiters. So I need to use limiters more. So here we're putting a limiter on the drums, which makes sense. Um, Cause as you're, you're boosting maybe the lower in volume sounds within the drum kit, you don't want to be boosting everything and getting clipping. So this kind of sets a ceiling so you can get really nice, dense, punchy drums, um, a different, plugins in here so there's an EQ and then you can also see what is actually mapped to the macro so some things are just you know static right we just have a static curve here and some things are mapped so I believe the treble here is mapped so you can see if I move the treble macro here I can boost it right at 8k there for the drums if I want and then we have the API 560 I really like this one you can see it outlined in red here what's being controlled so not trouble presence maybe yep we're boosting presence so we got presence control here base yep base control and smack attack this is a cool one so this allows us to control the attack and sustain of our drums overall so that's really cool and then vitamin which i believe would allow us to do the width here yeah um so let's hear what this is doing You can hear it definitely makes everything a lot brighter and a bit punchier as well. So that's pretty cool. So immediately you can just pull up a whole plug-in chain, saves you a ton of time mixing. So this is really incredible. And speaking of mixing, just pulling up pl plug-in chains willy-nilly is really not enough to create a professional quality mix. You have to actually know what you're doing and follow a proven system, which is why I put together my free mixing checklist which you can grab in the description below or go to orpheusaudioacademy.com this walks you through step by step how to go about mixing a song from step one to step two and so on so you can pr produce radio quality music from home each and every time this will save you a ton of time so you can release more music and finish more mixes faster i believe i was using this on my vocals as well so we can look at vocals down here you can see we got basically different eq and compression going on here and various multiple macros are assigned to these. So basically just one knob brighter is connected to the shine brighter. Clear mud is the Plugtech EQP1A. Um, everything else is just static. So you're just getting a really mostly a static EQ uh, or static plugin chain here, which is great too, that's fine too. So we can listen to what these vocals sound like before and after. Blind, convey a belt, death, robots inside, formaldehyde, breath, formaldehyde, breath. So it sounds pretty good, a little harsh. I might want to maybe I'll bring down the brighter or maybe need to add a de in there because there's no de at this point in time. Um, pretty good if I put the delay and reverb on that I was using. Pretty cool. I just went into Studio Verse here and I think I typed in like vocals and just pull up this first chain here, right here, because it had a bunch of downloads. So, boom, cool vocals. So, maybe I want to use something else here. So, I like this one, so I'm going to save it. But I can pull up another instance of Studio Rack. Platinum vocals here by Damian Lewis. Vocals, backing vocals, pop lead vocal. So we got de in here, so let's look at all, so we can see what's on here. Right now they're all turned off, interesting, so I guess we can choose what we want to turn on. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice, are we so blind? Convey a belt, death, robots. So we got our box on here. 
Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? Convey a belt death, robots inside the so Melda High. So that's go with one control here. We're EQing a bunch of parameters. So that's a bit extreme. So maybe like right there. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? Can we got a parallel split here. CLA 76. Does it, this is synced to Smash, I guess. So we can have some parallel compression. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? Convey a belt death. Ro Shep's parallel particles. This is a nice one. So we can add thickness and brightness here with tone. Imitation hearts, replica mom. I think we're getting louder. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? Convey a belt death. Robots inside formaldehyde. And we got an exciter here. So it's another parallel split. Uh, Sephira. So it's a harmonic exciter. Blending into the parallels. So this is more parallels. So parallel saturation, I guess. We have parallel compression, parallel saturation. Wow. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? More DSing you can add in. Imitation hearts, replica minds. Convey a belt death, robots inside formaldehyde. This one's pretty darn good. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? Convey a belt death, robots inside Vermelda High. And if you look at the meter, we're not really adding any volume, although it sounds louder because of the compression, because of the limiting. We're bringing up the quiet parts, squashing the high parts. It's more consistent. So it makes it sound louder, but we're not actually adding any more peak volume. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? Convey a belt death, robots. Pretty awesome. So like instantly you can get really good vocals. Obviously this will need to be tweaked a little bit, but like with just a couple of clicks, you have basically everything mixed. So this is a really awesome tool, right? You could scan through here all day looking for stuff. Um, let's look at tags. All right, look at all the, you got stuff for different instruments. Every instrument you could think of, except for maybe mayonnaise. Is mayonnaise in here? Is mayonnaise an instrument? No mayonnaise. So need to take off points for that because mayonnaise is indeed an instrument. But we got master bus. What if I throw something on the master bus now? Mix bus. Mix that bus up. By the way, is bus spelled with two S's or one? I've seen it both ways. You tell me in the comments below. I mean, obviously a school bus is one, but like an audio bus. What do we got going on here? Optional EQ. Interesting. Then we got compression. SSL compression. That's a very good compressor. I do indeed like using this on my mix buses. EQ. So is this sweetening. So we boost up sweetening. What are we doing? We're Boosting and attenuating at 30. That's kind of the unique feature of the EQ P1A is you get like, you can boost and attenuate the same frequency and it creates a really nice low end without mud. Do a separate tutorial on that. And then we're also boosting some of the higher frequencies there right about where the vocals would sit. So that's nice. Oh, infected mushroom pusher. I really like this plugin actually. Uh, this sounds really good. So what, what is this on? Oh, uh, the low note. So set the key um, and then just push. Cool, so I think this is like compression. Could be wrong there. And then width, stereo width, cool. I like that push. Okay, so push is doing everything. Highs, the harmonics. All right, let's hear what this sounds like before and after. Imitation hearts, replica minds, illusion of choice. Are we so blind? Convey a belt death. Robots inside formaldehyde. Let's 
making it a bit louder, so we'll compensate a bit. Huge, huge difference. So amazing. I, I, I'm i going to be using this in literally every song I make because this is just incredible. So I believe you can get a seven day free trial of this. Just click the link in the description below or go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash waves access. And I highly recommend this. Definitely try it out and see if it's something that will fit inside of your workflow. Remember, grab my free mixing checklist in the description below. This will show you a proven step-by-step -step process for how to produce radio-worthy tracks from home each and every time so you can finish more music faster. And if you want more help finishing pro-quality music faster, then be sure to click the video playing on the screen right now. With that, have an awesome day and keep creating.